right, so today is Christmas Eve and we are heading to our first call. It's a walk-in cooler that, or walk-in freezer that's got ice on the floor, I guess. So let's uh, go take a look at this little cooler. It's probably, I'm assuming, a drain line issue. Maybe the uh, heater in the drain line's bad or something. So let's go take a look and see what's going on with that. All right, there's our culprit. It's negative eight and yes, it's locked. So let's go take a peek around the back side. I think this one drains down down the back side here. I've had to replace one of the controls in this thing once already. So probably need to get up on the roof and take a look at it. All right, so you can see what's happened is it's dripping down. Obviously the drain pan's not keeping defrosted. If you look up in here, the foil for the evaporator is clean. If you look up in here, let me zoom in, you can see there's an ice ball right there on the end of the coil. I would say in that vicinity there, you can see a heater right there. So let's go up on the roof, it'll be easier to see. But I think it's gonna be heater related. Okay, so here's what the little drain is. Don't see much ice there, but you do down here on the roof. That could just be a pocket from it holding the water. You can uh, just pop this top. Let's talk about fun. How would you like getting on that roof? Because I'll probably be doing that here in a minute. Um, basically, to get up there, you've got put your ladder up against that right there and then kind of climb across. The angle isn't real friendly, to say the least. All right, so we got the top off of there and looking inside here, you can see that it grew a big old freaking piece of ice. And I'm gonna assume that that's probably what's keeping the fan blade there from turning. That's not gonna turn. So we're gonna put this thing into a uh, defrost and see what's working, what's not. You can see that the ice has accumulated over to the corner, so I'm gonna guess that probably it's not draining out. And you can see there's a little drain heater right there. My guess would be that it's uh, freezing up and then backing up and then it just grows and grows and grows until you get what you got. So, gonna have to pop this other cover, see if we can get in there and put this thing into a defrost. All right, so we got the top off here. Clock looks like it's uh, programmed for about a what is that? 45 minutes every and you know, four times every 24 hours. Let's see if this thing rotates at all. We can probably track it. My fingers are going numb. The wind's blowing like hell, so it's colder than shit out here. Obviously, it's not a failure of the clock because. Otherwise, we'd have ice all over the foil. So the fan shuts off. She should be going down to the pump down. I had to replace that control. Forget when. I don't know where the date's at. It might be on the inside. There, it just pumped down. So, this is one of those Honeywell, or this is one of those Copeland controls that basically. I replaced that back in about just about a year, a couple months ago. All right, we're gonna let this run for just a bit and uh, may have to add a little heat to it. You can tell one of those motors has been replaced. I don't know if it's that one or that one, but one of them's been replaced already once. I would speculate, probably the one with wire nuts, but I think they both got wire nuts. All right, let's let this thing, uh, see if we can get it to melt some. Notice the uh, drain line down there. It looks like it's open right there. So it may, may the drain heater may be all right. They just had us accumulation there on the end. Hard to say. Give it a bit here. Might get the amp meter out. I've already bent this thing down a little bit. You can see water is starting to come out of it already. Which there's nothing keeping that from freezing there to there. 
Well, that's definitely working. I can feel that plain as day. Let's see if we can get down to. It's so freaking, it's so freaking cold out here. I can barely feel crap. I can definitely feel that. I'm pretty sure that's working. I think what we're gonna run into is we just need to melt this out and uh, let it start all over again. Cause like I said, the coil's clean. And then once it stopped the fan, it just made the crap worse. So I'm gonna get my pump sprayer. We could use that little hose over there, which would work, but chances are we'll flood this stupid thing out and then it'll strip down there and make a heck of a mess. Get us some nice hot water here and let's we'll see if we can melt that stuff off. You can be surprised how fast this thing will get it done. Okay, this is probably going to make a little bit of a mess. We'll go ahead and see if we can get this ice melted away so it trails away from the uh, inside and actually goes down the drain. So we're going to work on this drain first, make sure it's cleared out. That's such a slow little freaking hole. Which really, really sucks. You can see right there, the water's not going down. Nothing's coming out. So we might have been on the right track to begin with. The drain line's just uh, freaking plugged up. Yeah, we'll work on this for a little while. Not that you can hardly tell, but some of that crap right there busted loose and she's starting to drain, drain out. So we're on the right track. I would say right there is our biggest issue is the drain line was plugged up. That heater there, drain heater, feels to be working. I can feel heat on it. So, we're on the right track here. We'll blow that out once we're done melting the rest of this crap out. I'm trying to knock some of this ice off the top here. Next thing you know, you're doing a nose dive into the concrete down below. So, well, I know the defrost termination works because I got it warm and it kicked back on, so I had to unhook that wire so that it would quit running. We're still melting away here. Time for refill number two. There we go. That just came out with a big old uh, stream of water. Blew a couple chunks out. We're going to trim this thing up a little bit, shorten it up. It's just no sense of it being out there. Chance for it to freeze more. So, uh, just going to continue getting this crap off here. Got to love it. It'd be great if we could run that over to the side with a piece of PVC, but I'm afraid that it eventually would just clog off no matter what size pipe I put on it. All right, so we've got everything melted out over here. You can see that it all drained down, no problems. I got everything in the middle completely cleaned out. When that comes out now, you can see, look at that nice stream we got going on here. Let me shoot some down there. Comes out nice and good. So right now I'm just kind of washing some of this crap out. You can see what all I've gotten so far. Not that uh, winter is a time where you really need a uh, perfectly clean condenser but no better time to do it than right now I mean uh, I got nice warm water up here and some left over my jug here so just kind of get the last bit of crud off that way it's uh, ready for next spring now I have had it screw me before where basically because now the coils clean the rose lower head pressure and then uh, end up uh, having some issues, so you gotta make sure your sight glass and everything's full before you leave after you do cleaning like this, otherwise it can bite you in the butt. But you can kinda see that it's coming through, sorta. There you go, kinda. Not real great, but it is coming through. So it's uh, just about done here. Just about done. What I did is I heated up that nozzle on my uh, spray sprayer there and got that nice 90. 
makes it a lot easier if you want to get into coils and stuff that are in tight spots. So she just kicked back on, time delays on. So go ahead and put this away and see if, uh, how everything starts to run here. Because it's winter time, what I'll do when I'm done using this in the winter is I will go ahead and drain it out, flip it upside down, and that way it blows everything out of the hose. Because for us, it gets below freezing here and that thing won't be ready to go on the next go around if you need it. So prep your tools for the next trip. Did get some cool stuff from Solder Weld too. I'm going to be doing a video on that. The aluminum and uh, copper to aluminum and a few other different types of solder. That stuff's pretty wicked. All right, so we got a nice full sight glass there. That fan's running. These fans are running. It's starting to freeze up again, obviously, because I ain't got uh, any airflow going through it. So we'll put the cover on it. We'll run it back into a defrost one last time. Hook that X terminal back up. And we'll probably call this one a day for today. All right, so we went ahead and cut that off at an angle and shorten that up. That still puts us outside of this track here. This track basically goes uh, on the outside here and it's not gonna go anywhere. I don't care if it gets up on that ledge and uh, gave it the old skadoodle. Um, like I said, got her back into defrost. Gotta hook that wire up yet. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and end the video there. Uh, what I ended up finishing up with was testing everything out, ran the coil back through a defrost again, made sure the coil was completely clean. Everything looked fine, everything drained out fine. The heater appeared to be working fine on the drain on the inside of the cooler. Kind of wondering why they didn't run it external of the cooler, um, but it doesn't seem to make a difference uh, because it was still working when I went back on New Year's Eve. I was called back out because they said it was just as bad as before, but when I got there, checked everything out and found the coil was completely clear, uh, that everything was still draining, went into a defrost like it was supposed to, that the problem lied in the fact that they didn't clean up the ice that was on the floor. Uh, they didn't request that I did that. Uh, generally, you know, everywhere I've ever worked at, the employees will clean that up um, because most uh, places that hire you find it, you know, less expensive to have their hourly employees do it versus our hourly rate. Uh, so I ended up cleaning that up for them, double checked everything, everything was fine, uh, you know, and was working great. So the problem lies underneath the drain line being plugged. Uh, I ended up getting a black chunk that blew out when I hit it with that Galo gun and uh, the motors were still working good. I was a little concerned at first that that uh, ECM motor might have been damaged by being locked rotor like it was for as long as it was, uh, but it seemed to be still working fine and uh, no issues. Everything was still energizing into defrost, out of defrost. I think I ended up taking the defrost down to uh, 30 minutes instead of the 45. Uh, generally, you could probably gotten away with three since that uh, freezer was not in the kitchen and people aren't going to get into it very often. That's all going to be dependent on the humidity and environment that the freezer's in, uh, you know, what kind of climate you're in and things like that. So I went ahead and just left it at four. It never fails for me that if I change things too much, too drastically, that things end up uh, acting up later. So sometimes you're just better off not to mess too much around. So if you guys enjoyed the video, if you would, you know what to do. I'd like to remind you too, uh, tonight on Sunday, uh, we've been trying to do it every Sunday at 8.30 Eastern time. We've been going live, me and the wife. We've been taking your questions on the videos and kind of just doing a chat, hang out with you guys and kind of just, uh, you know, get to know one another a little bit better. So if you guys want to come in and hang out with us, we'll be live, like I said, 8.30 Eastern time on the YouTube channel right here. And uh, don't forget to click the notification bell, click custom. That way you don't get bombarded by all kinds of different notifications. That, uh, that way you're notified when I release my next video. So as I said in the video, happy new year, guys. I wanna thank everyone for subscribing and coming up being a part of this channel. I truly do appreciate that. It's been great to see it grow like it has been. And uh, you guys are just awesome. So until next time, we will catch you guys on the next one.